What's going on gamers? It's Phil H here from Beneath the Veil and welcome back to the channel. And today we are doing our second part of our five part series about uh, basic role guides. And uh, following on from last week's video about hard support, we are following up with soft support. So today I'm playing a Shadow Shaman in the off lane as a position 4. Um, the reason I like Shadow Shaman as a position 4 is that I can provide uh, constant lane pressure and objective pressure on my own, which I tend to find when I'm playing support roles. Sometimes my cores struggle to do, they get into the, you know, endless farming mindset and um, we end up losing a lot of games as a result. So I find with the amount of pressure that I can put on as a position 4, especially with Shadow Shaman, with the, the ult here in my Serpent Wards, um, I just find a lot more success in general. Um, I think it's one of my strongest position 4 heroes. So, um, Early game, it's going to look very similar to last week's video because essentially what you're looking to do is the same job as a position 5 in the laning phase, but reversed, obviously. So I'm looking to try and counteract any small camp pulls that they're doing, either by stopping the pull before it happens or um, blocking the camp. And then I'm also looking to harass the core as much as I can. Getting a few right clicks off on uh, Phantom Lancer. And yeah, so I'm just going to try and get some bits of harass where I can, get some denies where I can help to pull the lane equilibrium back through denies and then also through pulls. Shakira is playing very aggressively and uh, as you'll see as we start to level up I'm going to end up putting a point in Hex just to relieve some of the pressure that PL's putting on with his um, Spirit Lance. Now I realize that Shakira has blocked my camp so I'm looking to stop him from doing the pull so I attack them early at the time that he would want to pull and the pull's going to fail as a result as you see. Now I'm looking to unblock my own camp. So since there's so many places here, the box of reveal is like this, right? So it comes around and around on the side of the trees as well. So in unblocking a hard camp, you have to put a sentry ward in the middle of the camp to be able to check all sides. Otherwise, if you put it on this side and they've warded on this side, you're not actually going to pick it up. So that's what I end up doing is figuring out, okay, so he's warded on this side. So I take out that sentry and then I have to kill my own so that it will spawn again. Unbeknownst to me at the time, Jakura ended up then putting another sentry here. So he really did not want me side pulling because he knew that that would pull the Phantom Lancer out of position. So Jakura was playing a really, really solid game here. Really fundamental understanding of how the lane mechanics work. Um, and he's working to you know, work against what I'm trying to do here as well. As you can see... Bristleback is getting a huge amount of last hits compared to anybody else, so our lane is going really well. So that's why I'm not too worried about anything else in this game in terms of lane control and stuff like that, because I know that Bristle's just so far ahead. I'm more just looking to try and control this camp again. So this ward though, I did have an issue with this ward and I let him know, because my intention was always to be playing here, so him warding here doesn't actually help us at all. Because this is where I'm posted up, right? If I was playing on this side of the lane, then this ward is really good. But because I'm playing here all the time, this is redundant vision. This would be much more helpful if it were on this side of the trees, for example, because then I can see rotations coming through and cut them off. But um, when your support is already playing here, this is a really, really bad ward because it's giving you vision that your, your hero would give you otherwise. So again, as I said last week, I could look to do things like roam mid to help secure runes. But yeah, I was, I was much more interested in shutting down the pressure um, I mean, and snowballing the pressure on the position one and keeping Bristleback's farm up because Bristleback's the kind of hero that if he gets a good early game, he just takes over the entire map and um, that gives me so much more freedom. And now we forced a rotation, so I called it, hey, we got three here, so let's back up. I'm trying to help him get out if I can. So I throw out some hexes where I can, throw out some ether shocks. And now Viper's here, so we look to turn. I'm just a little bit too slow. There we go, so I get the Kunker. So that's the off lane. The position 4 turns up. And now the mid's here. So, you know, we forced effectively a 5 man rotation to this lane, like 8 minutes into the game. Uh, we've just bought so much space. We've, you know, baited out the mid ult. Um, so our Drow and bot lane is just getting a whole bunch of free space right now. She's choosing to push a tower with her, which is whatever. Um, you know, mid's uh, our position 5 is rotated mid to soak some levels, so this is all just space, you know. Yes, they get 3 kills out of it, but as you can see, we're still at a 2k advantage 9 minutes into the game. So Bristleback and I have just 
provided so much pressure that we forced a you know massive over response from their from their point of view and we're just continuing to you know go on what, what we were doing so punish the earth spirit for taking too long you know spending too much time here you know, block the stun so that he can't leave and then it's just a free kill for us again i am going to look towards now that we're approaching the 10 minutes i want the tome because it will get my level 6 online so i queue that up ready to take it as soon as it comes because my ult is one of the most significant in this game on our team um, so yeah, I'm prioritizing making sure that I get that online as soon as possible. So as soon as the time's up, I grab it, ship it out. Don't actually need to use it on our tower. As a position 4, you always want to help your position 3 take this tier 1 tower as quickly as you can. For many reasons. So the main one being is that it opens up these two camps here. Um, so these camps are effectively owned by your, by your team now. Um, and that's free for your position 3 to farm. This also gives them the opportunity to push right up to the tier 2 and then farm back this way. And you give them a really nice um, rotation that keeps pressure on, it forces answers, and then you can look to do things like infiltrate this area. And um, you know, I could look to do things like get some deep vision here. There's lots of things that I could look to do as a result of taking this tier one tower. My next objective is to take the tier one mid, um, since it hasn't dropped already, and then um, look to you know provide even more pressure into the tier two here, you know, look to, put pressure over this you know these camps and control these and then the second that we drop ideally this tier 2 tower I'll look to take this and then um just secure you know all of their jungle for us that will kick the PL out into basically just the ancient and hard camp and you know massively restrict his farm that's sort of the next phase of the game now what I'm looking to do is um secure the tier 1 and then look to aggressively apply pressure into their jungle. You can see that Jakiro is constantly de-warding, so um, the wheels are starting to come off for him a little bit. Um, he's trying too hard to hold on to these parts of the map that really have been surrendered already by virtue of just tier 1. So I'm just helping him escape, I'm just hexing the illusion, and yeah, just helping him leave. I'm just putting a sentry here just purely to drain resources, because um, I know that he's put a sentry up there, so I put one up there myself just to force a potential sentry up there again. Um, just because the more sentries they use on a spot where they don't get anything out of it, you know, the more potential vision spots I could have just because I can't control them. We're just here to ease a bit of pressure on bot, you know, I'm de warding a bit. And this is where, yeah, so I'm pinging out that I've got serpent wards, and then I'm actually saying that I'm on my way mid. So I'm telling the Viper by, by extension that, hey, I have my ult, I want this tower. That's what I'm here to do. I'm going to push in your lane. I'm going to take that tower so that we just get more map control. Unbeknownst to me, they uh, see me walking in, which is fine. And then we realize, there you go. So we see that they have the ward there. So I'm just going to nuke the wave to push it in. What I ideally want to do is if the Snapfire comes in for the fight, I want to ult and then shackle her. Um, but yeah, she's playing it the right way and falling back. I see that Jakira is also making a presence mid, which is correct on his part because they've actually also taken the bot tower, so this is their last tier one, which is worth defending. So I'm going to end up sort of staticking a bit here and just doing a little bit of a back and forth. We see that they've rotated three in, so they really don't want to let this tier one go, which is totally fine. Um, in hindsight, I could have maybe just left and gone to play with Bristle back top. Um, but he was playing bot at this time. This is really just what you want to do. You want to wait for the enemies to get bored and go somewhere else. So I see that, you know, on the ward that we have, that Snapfire's rotated bot to gank the Bristleback. So we see that there are now three bots, so now we can take this tower. I don't even need to commit my ult. If you've got ultimate abilities that are really good objective takers, you don't want to commit them when they're not needed. Um, if I was afraid, you know, if we didn't have the info that three were rotating bot, then I'd be much more likely to just dump it, just to secure it, because I don't know where the enemy team are. But in that case, we had the, the knowledge, so I'm happy just to auto-attack the creeps, and then, I mean, auto-attack the tower, and then take it that way. And now my, I've still got my ult up, so I can look to put pressure on the tier 2 top. So yeah, I did tell Viper that I was going to bait, but um, yeah, he used the skill on the lane, so if anybody's paying attention to the lane, it's no longer viable anymore. So um, yeah, just looking to continue pressure, use my Q to nuke the whole wave, and... I really shouldn't have done this in retrospect. Taking a fight here with somebody like Shadow uh, Shaman is just really bad because now I've committed my ult and I've got no real value out of it. Uh, yes, I do a bunch of damage to the Earth Spirit, but he doesn't die and we all end up dying. This is just really bad. As a Shadow Shaman, you want to be taking fights in lane. 
Ideally, if we take a fight underneath tower, then we, you know, pressure the lane. I drop my wards here, and I can always just micro them just to attack the tower, so I at least do tower damage. Here, I get a bit of extra hero damage just because they're taking a fight underneath my wards, but... If the Dyer was smart about this, they just don't take a fight here, and, um... You know, they get even more value than they already got. Um, so that was just a really bad team fight initiated by my Viper there. But, you know, that, that's how a game goes. You can't let those uh, slip-ups get to you. This is going to be more of the same. I'm just looking to take the pressure off bot, uh, off mid rather. Apply a bit of um, vision, you know, figure out where they've got vision. Take out sentries. And now I know that I see that Drow's got the right idea. So yeah, just constantly dewarding. I'm going to push lane. And you see here, I just dump it because we have no real vision of where the enemy team are. So I just dump my wards and then run back. If they take out the wards, that's fine. Now I TP back mid. I've seen that we forced a rotation of two top. So now this um this air spirit is less likely to be defended. He does have the snap here, so we know that since two have just TP top, there's at least you know I mean there's at most one more that can come in. They're just looking snap as a DD, so we're being careful. You know, they overcommit here. And now, I don't know why the Shadow Demon stood next to me while Snapfire was ulting, but... That is what it is. I have to commit my, my disable spells. Try and get kills. So you can see it's a 2 for 2 trade so far. And now a 3 for 3. So, you know, if we trade both of our supports in our uh, mid lane for a hard support a mid and an offlane, so it's always worth. And then the fight is just continuing mid, so I TP back to come and help. I ping out, there's a uh, regen there because I don't need it. I find the real one. But yeah, just looking to continue to apply pressure. I do have my ult back up, so I'm always keeping in mind how I can use it. Just keeping Bristol alive. We see that the Kanki uses his ult, which is always good. And Shakira is here, so he just gets shut down. Just continuing to apply pressure where we can, and now that we've won team fights, my team is doing the right thing and pushing lanes. Since I can't go and help them quickly, I'm just going to counter push the bot lane and then look to connect again. So uh, I think Drow actually calls for a gank on the Jakira off the back of the smoke that I still have. So I try and rotate in, I don't quite have enough movement speed, and then for some reason he turns around again, so he just dies. And now there's a team fight breaking out top, so we both rotate over that way with the DD. I quickly put up some vision before we take the fight. Ether shock all of the illusions, try and find the real one. Can tell which one's the real one because he runs away with the real one, which is a little bit unfortunate on his part. I do die, but then again, you know, we end up trading pretty much everybody for just me. You know, this happens for me all the time as a position four. I'll be the only one that will die in a team fight, but we pretty much team wipe. So never get down on yourself for a trade like that. That's always really, really good. As you see, the gold disparity is just continuing to go our way. Um, so you know, we were never really at risk of losing this game in hindsight. Though I can assure you during the game itself it definitely felt like we could have. So yeah, here, since there's a team fight breaking out around the, the objective, I'm happy to drop my ult. Just because I'm sure that I can get a lot of value out of it. You know, they all want to fight around it. So you see I'm getting all this free damage off on the Earth Spirit. And then whenever there's not a hero here, my Serpent Wards will just go back to attacking the tower. So we end up cleaning up the tower here as well. So yeah, as a Shadow Shaman in particular, I'm always looking for a fight like that. That's around an objective, because it just means that I get to take an objective for free. Now just more of the same. Establish vision aggressively. Drow will eventually start to rotate onto this side of the map. Start to play up top once we've established secure vision. Um, and then, we, yeah, we're just continuing to basically live on their side of the map. And just give Drow all the space in the world to farm. So you see we're 9k ahead. So yeah, just massive, massive... Um, difference in value here. I'm applying pressure to the top tier 2 on my own. And then team fight breaking out, so I have to try and leave. This was unfortunate on my part, but it is what it is, you know. That was pretty much their entire team come to 
um, prevent that. And then, you know, before I even respawn, my team are back on that side of the map like nothing even happened. So now we're getting to the late game stages. Um, so I should have said last week, but it didn't come up in the game. That at this point, you know, once you've taken multiple tier twos, this is where you enter sort of your late game. So you want to start doing things like warding for Roche. So as you can see here, I've got vision up here. I did have vision up here. Um, I dewarded. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're secure here um, to take this. And then this will end up helping you go high ground. So now I'm looking to put a smoke into my inventory so that maybe we can get a nice little smoke gank off. So I push the lane. Um, just as a note, you'll see that I waited there a little bit after the creep wave died. That is because the vision on creep waves does linger a little bit after the creeps die. So um, it's always worth waiting to smoke. Um, just to make sure that the only way that the enemies will see that you smoked is if they have um, wards there. So yeah, we try and grab the snap, which doesn't quite work out, which is fine. And now we're just sort of in this dance where we want to go high ground, but we don't want to commit to the high ground because we don't want to fight on their terms. So we let our bristle take a bunch of damage and then just try and heal him up as much as possible. Yeah, it is a 5 on 5, and our Shadow Shaman was, I mean, our um, Shadow Demon was continuing to not play with us for some unbonus reason. But um, yeah, if we're just sort of looking to find the opportunity to take this fight, realistically what we should be doing is pushing in top as well, but it is just naturally pushing in itself. So um, ideally, you know, we should have waited for this to come in first, but, you know, boat gets used on the Viper and Bristle, the... Uh, Earth Spirit gets into the back. My focus is on keeping the Drow alive. Um, if the Bristle dies, that's just unfortunate. So yeah, he gets melted. My main my main objective is to keep the Drow alive and then get objectives if we can. So we still actually end up getting that tower. And now they go on the Viper. So we managed to get the Clunker there. I grab the real PL, and then unfortunately, instead of you know, I hex, and then he ends up saving him so that he gets off a doppel, which is just unfortunate. But managed to grab him again, and now we just get melted because the Drow's dead. So yeah, bit of a misplay on my uh, my other supports part, but it is what it is. I TP Glimmer away, and then proceed to ask my Shadow Shaman to please never save the PL again. You know, I mean, bad players are going to be bad. There's nothing you can do except ask them, you know, politely to play the way that you'd like them to play. Which in my case was, please don't save the PL. Let me just keep him disabled. There's not much that I can do to save this, um, so I just have to let it go. And we just have to look to preserve our high ground in this instance. We do still have our tier 1 top. They haven't prioritized that at all, because they want the pressure on the bot side of the map, which is fair enough. There you go, we get a nice little gank. I decide to commit my wards there because it was a big team fight. I just have to save myself from the snap fire here. Now we force a double buyback. And um, yeah, I'm just looking to rotate out really. So I secure the outpost on my way out. And I think I say to Viper at this point that yeah, it's time to leave. And um, again, just looking to push things in. We see the bristles tanked a huge gank bot and they're ancient so we just continue to push top once i saw that ward i just had that you know that feeling that we were getting ganked and i was like okay time to leave boys glimmer to get out of the way i realized that i don't have a tp so i just have to try and juke the best i can and thankfully they don't continue to chase which is nice so um it's it's just pretty much all of this in the late game. It's just looking for good fights, looking to see if Roche is up, and then otherwise just trying to take good fights where they come up. Then once you've taken a good fight, look to secure objectives. If you see that they're over committing somewhere and you can take an objective in exchange, there you go, so we see that Roche is up. So we quickly take that down. Again, look to secure vision top. Look to take the fight mid. It's a bit unfortunate the bristle died so quick, but...
I end up dying, which is just unfortunate. I do end up buying back here because I still have my ult up, so I'm still actually, you know, I can find value in buying back here. So I come in, and I know that draws all of my damage, so I drop my wards behind the tower, uh, behind the racks. Because it allows me to provide just so much pressure, even though they get insta-killed. Then I grab the snapfire, so she instantly dies. Kanka gets killed. So yeah, Drow and I pretty much now can just end the game on our own. That's why I really enjoy Shadow Shaman, is that especially when you go the... You know, I'm building into the Octarine, but when you build with Shadow Shaman, you can build a build that is just straight up perma-disabled, so nobody can ever like be on their own, which is what I always do. Um, just because, especially you know, with Drow in particular, you just can output so much damage if you can just permanently disable somebody. So nice little position 4 guide for you there, so that's all for this week. Uh, look forward to seeing you next week when we go through the offlane, and until then, I'll see you next time.